such a bad guy. And incidentally, they misquoted. I never said what they said I said in Britain. Never. Here's a little story for you that you should really pay attention to. Saudi Arabia buying American farmland to export crops home. Can you believe how sick this country is? That we let foreign entities like China, Saudi Arabia, and other Persian Gulf countries scooping up our farmland and sending the crops home to their own country, leaving us to starve. It just shows you that at the end of the day, there's insanity ruling this country. You know, Canada does not permit you to buy farmland, the foreigners. You know that because the Chinese were coming in and wanting to buy up tens of thousands of hectares. They wouldn't let them do it. So they banned foreigners, if I understand correctly, from owning more than 20 acres in Canada. I mean, look, people get around that. They put up uh, front groups that, you know, as a group, they buy 20 acres each, whatever. But Canada has some limits on selling off their farmland. Not in America. No, everything's for sale. Your, your borders, your language, your culture, your farmland, the water, the air, the lumber, the minerals, the soybeans, the horses, the chickens come home to roost on the Savage Nation. WJR Jason, welcome to the Savage Nation. Yeah, today we're seeing in Hollywood how the liberals are now fighting amongst each other to be to see who's more PC due to this uh, black boycott of the Oscars. Right, right. The, bl the black boycott that there aren't enough black nominees for an, for an Academy Award. What's that about? Why they automatically have to win an award because of their race? Well, it seems that way. It seems they want to have affirmative action in Hollywood. And uh, well, they already have it. When you when you have an actor who's terrible like Samuel L. Jackson Jr one of the worst actors in history, who was pushed ahead for reasons I can't even imagine. Every time he opens his mouth, he spews anti-white hatred. No wonder the police boycotted his movie with Quentin Tarantino. Well, there's, this is a divide, and uh, now these people, these hypocrites... But, but why must a person of a certain race win an Academy Award? How does that work? It's, it's based on affirmative action now. Well, that would be like saying you must hire short white guys to be fullbacks on your football teams. Or or have to be forced to hire uh, women that aren't qualified to be firefighters. Oh, you mean like San Francisco's fire department? Or in New York now is doing the same thing. New York City Fire Department has dropped their standards. And their oh, yeah, they can't lift the ladder, they can't lift the hose, and they make a, poli a fire chief for 570000 a year, and they hire their friends. Then they retire. A fire broke out in San Francisco last year. The so-called fire chief hid a block away at a command center so she wouldn't soil her white uniform. She didn't even get a cinder on the uniform. I think she won an award for her uh, prized work during the fire. I get it. Look, it's crazy. You see, here's the problem. We're living in a crazy world. And it takes men like me to try and right the sinking ship. But there's only so much mental bailing you can do. How much bailing can you do when the ship is sinking? Not much. Whatever. 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 That opens up a line, 855-407-282. I think we should go back to Sean Penn saying that the Mexican government set him up. I think it's worth... No, I don't want to do that. I made it... I changed my mind. Cultural... De I want to talk about cultural degeneracy. So I watched the Andrew Dice Clay Blue Show the other night. Something as is so sick that we couldn't play any of it on the air. But I'm mentioning it to show you how far Showtime has fallen to the level of anti-woman, the most misogynistic spewing of, of woman hatred I've ever seen in my entire life. One so-called comedian after another, they're psychopaths who hate women, making uh, jokes about female anatomy and the way women, I, I can't even say it on the show. I watched it in, in horror and asked myself, who runs Showtime? And we look it up, the Showtime CEO is Matthew Blank, and the parent company is CBS. And let's play the clip now. I think it's been purged for a general audience. Clip number one. It's Andrew Dice Clay on the next Laugh Out Loud. Do you remember when I started? I don't even remember when I started. This is the first show that I'm actually hosting with some of the craziest comics you'll ever see. I was six months sober last Woo! week. Don't clap, it's court ordered. <laughs> We're gonna really just have a good time, except for maybe you, jerk off face. We only got one question. Are you allergic to duct tape? I know what you're thinking. Show me where the comedian touched you. Show me on the teddy bear. You've been with a girl and she's like harder, and you're like, this is all I got. Andrew Dice Clay presents The Blue Show on the next Laugh Out Loud on Showtime. 
All right, this is an example of why we may need some sort of... i got to be very careful here. I'm a libertarian conservative when it comes to the media. I'm a sexual libertarian. But I think this kind of vile woman hatred provokes rape. It certainly provokes a debasement of women, let's be very clear. Remember, I'm a father and a grandfather. Never forget that about me. A lot of hosts have no children. I don't know if you know that. They're great advisors about family life, but they have no children of their own. I do, and I'm a grandfather, and I'm proud to say it. It took me a long time to become a grandfather, but I'm really proud as a grandfather. And I really find it sickening to, that Showtime permits this kind of hatred towards women to be broadcast. It's, it's sickening. It's mentally ill. Crazy. 855-400-7282. Now, could, here someone writes me this, Peter Chalka. He says, imagine if a Republican mogul was associated with a TV network that ran this kind of misogynistic programming. Could you hear this? Imagine if a Republican mogul, like the, Co the Coach Brothers or whatever, Cock Brothers, Coca-Cola, was associated with a TV network like Showtime that ran this kind of misogynistic programming, what would happen? And then he writes, I was in Connecticut several years ago when Interstate 95 through Fairfield County, Connecticut was clo closed so O's motorcade could travel unimpeded during rush hour to a fundraiser at Harvey Weinstein's Seaside Compound on Long Island Sound. Obama arrives at Harvey Weinstein's Connecticut Compound for lavish fundraiser. Uh, just saying the words Harvey and Weinstein together say it all. Nathan on the Internet, thank you for taking the bait. What's on your mind tonight, sir? Hi, Doc. Um, you know, you're talking about the Blue Show and uh, all the acts that they're describing, what they're going to do to women, and I'm surprised you didn't draw a correlation that a lot of the same acts and rapes and whatever is going on in Europe is, uh, is going on in Europe due to the uh, refugees. Interesting connection. What you're saying is the ultra the ultra liberals of Hollywood, in this case Showtime by promoting this misogynistic show by Andrew Dice Clay, uh, are promoting rapes against women? Correct, but they're talking about it. It's actually happening in Europe. So in other words, by let's. I think what you're trying to say is this, if I can think through it with you, is you're saying by promoting stereotypes against women, you are encouraging debasing women and raping women. Yes. Ugh. Okay, if I had the power, something would happen, and it would have happened yesterday. It would have happened yesterday to, to Showtime if I had the power. But lucky for them, I have no power. All I have is my keen mind and my observational qualities, which I will use when I return right here on the Savage Nation. I was driving home the other night in the rain, and I happened to turn this on at night, and I was like playing it as loud as I possibly could in the car. Do you ever do that? Just play music you love in the car. It's raining outside, and you're in your own universe. And it brought me back to my, I don't know, late teen. Turn it, they can't hear me and listen to the music. I love the music. So they're doing a, a eulogy to this guy, Chocolate, who died last week at age 88. I always love how long Cuban musicians live. I must be the cigars and the, the, the rum and the sex. I don't know what it is. I don't know how they live that long, but they live in a guy towards 70 countries, right? The music is astounding. He started playing in the 1920s or 30s. I couldn't believe it, and it's such an inspiration to me to realize you can keep going on. No matter how many impediments get in your way, you keep playing your music. Remember, no matter what you may think of us in talk radio, we're, we're performers. At the end of the day, at the beginning of the day, at the end of the day, we are performers. We may present politics from our point of view. But that's only part of what we do. We are performers. We are performing. I am singing. I am using my voice. I am using my voice for three straight hours with a break here and there. I have four breaks an hour, just like a musician does on a stage. So you have to understand that I get my inspiration to a great extent by musician, from musicians. And this music was the top of the heap. I mean, I have played so many different types of music on this show over the years. And still to this day, reminds me. I mean, I've played Italian music, I've played Pavarotti, I've played Nino Rota, Eight and a Half Theme. You know all the great stuff. I've played some great opera. we played some wonderful things over the years on the Savage Nation in our cultural music library. But I don't think I've played enough of this 
I, I don't want to call it Latin music because this is traditionally Afro-Cuban music, incidentally. Afro-Cuban music. And I remember when I was 18 years old and how this music jumped me out of my staid middle-class life. It was this music that enabled me to go forward into the world and set out on my own road. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? And some of the things I did were not good. Some of the things I did were good. Some of the things I did were stupid. Some of the things I did were great. But nevertheless, I took that road, and here I am, so many decades later. And that's why it's a sort of eulogy to Chocolate. So play a little Chocolate. Cuba was once a wild, crazy place. They destroyed it, the Castro gangsters. They turned it into a prison camp. Anyway, what's the difference? No one knows what I'm talking about. I'm mean, basically babbling to my dog. I mean, you turn on a radio talk show, all you want to hear about is Hillary and, and Bernie and, and, and Trump and Cruz and this and that. I'm not going to do that from now until the election. There's a limit to how much I can do it and how much you can listen to that garbage. I mean, let it get a, How long does an election go on in a country? What a sick nation. How many years? Like a, It's like crazy. Make it a three-month period. Limit the amount of money you put into it and get it over with. Let the idiots vote already. You know, make it a 90-day campaign, a maximum of, I don't know, what, $100 million each, and bingo, it's over. No one can spend any more than the other one. Limit the number of candidates, limit the number of months, and, and limit the time. Period. I'm sick of it already. A little headline. The, right, the day after Obama removed sanctions on Iran and gave them 75 to $100 billion, an Iran proxy called Hezbollah kidnapped three U.S. soldiers uh, near the border of Israel. You have three soldiers now in captivity by the terrorist state of Iran, just rewarded by the Obama administration. B.B. King, when love comes to town, I'm going to jump that train. I mean, he remember him? He's like similar kind of men in energy. 87, he died at 88. He had diabetes for many years, just shows you. Every ad, by the way, during the debate was for an illness, a drug. Did you notice this, what's going on? You watch Fox News, CNN, every ad is about this disease, that disease, this drug, that drug, and every drug. This can cause a heart attack, can cause cancer. You can drop dead in the street, but take the drug and don't tell anybody. But if you take the drug, it can lower this and raise that. Be careful, though, it can raise your chance of dying of colon cancer, heart attacks, brain cancer, tumors, Alzheimer's disease, and all around the ability. But otherwise, this drug is the most fabulous thing in the world, I guarantee you that Merck will provide it. If Squibb doesn't, the government will, and if that doesn't, we'll pay it for sure with Medicaid, Obamacare. This is the way to go. Every ad is an ad, another ad for, for a disease. How is this possible? We have such a sick society. Everyone's like the walking dead, marching around. Everybody needs a prescription. 18 prescriptions for each schmuck. And you see them eating the restaurant, the oldsters, hobbling in. They can't walk. Their joints are gone from the garbage they're eating. And they hobble in at the end. Can they have the dessert? Like little morons. They said, what's the dessert? Well, we have chocolate ice cream, vanilla ice cream. We have tiramisu. We have this sweet. We have that. Oh, goody. They rub their hands together. They take a diabetes pill. And they hobble out. And they have no idea that they're killing themselves. Just take the drug from AstraZeneca, squid, this one, that one. Unbelievable every year. And I have to see this. I have to watch this. And you wonder why a man gets agitated every once in a while. Let's go to the callers. Bill on KSFO. Welcome. What's on your mind, Bill? Mike, I just want to say from one musician to another, keep on playing that music and demonstrating your wonderful variety of inspiring thoughts and mental agility. <laughs> what kind of what kind of music do you play, Bill? Uh, I'm primarily a, a pianist, but I, I double on the bass and guitar. And I, I, I'm amazed by musicians. I have no ability to understand music. I just listen to it. You know, I wish I knew. I wish I could play an instrument. I cannot play an instrument. I admire people who can. I love the diversity of people who can think with their, you know, with their bodies, so to speak. I don't know how you do it. I don't even understand music. It's a weird language. Well, you you definitely remind me of my, some of my favorite musicians, and, and the way I play too is usually without a set list. You know, I go where I think the people want to go and, and need to hear, and. Uh, you just... Well, I, all I got to say to you is thank you for hearing the the music in me. <laughs> thank you for listening to my music is what I want to say, because this is a performance at the end of the day, and a little music now and again from different uh, you know worlds is amazing. Thank you for the call. So Chocolate, you don't know him, Armenteros, Cuban trumpeter, standard bearer of the African musical tradition, for seven decades died on January sixth in a nursing home in Mohegan Lake, New York. He was eighty seven. 
cause of complications of prostate cancer, San Alfredo Armenteros said. It's an amazing story 